So first things I want to do is to find all three positions where I'm on the left side of the screen, where I'm in the middle and on the right. So now I want to make this image pop by color correcting it. So I'm going to be using Lumetri color for this. By the way, this is my own plugin to quickly apply effects like Lumetri color or crop or any effect you want. In this case, it's going to be Lumetri color. In creative tab, I'm going to be using the lot that converts Apple lock to Rec 709. And I'll make some tweaks in basic correction to make things look pleasant. Okay, it looks nice to me. So now I'm gonna copy these tweaks to other footages by pressing Ctrl C on this main footage, selecting these two, Ctrl Alt V and paste the attributes. Now select all of them, right click, replace with After Effects composition. So now let's make this middle footage as the main one and move it to, to the beginning. So this is our main range of working space. So now we have this burger. Let's turn off first two layers. First, what we want to do, we want to choose where exactly we want the effect to happen. So I, I like it from cut here, moving a bit here and let's say cut here. So let's assume the effect is going to be happening somewhere in this range. And now let's rotoscope me. Select Roto Brush Tool, double click. Oh, so we set it to full here. Come back here and select me. And do some work around to make it look correctly. For the hair, select Refine Edge tool and select the edge of your hair and give some time to After Effects to make all of these calculations by pressing spacebar and then pressing freeze button to freeze the rotoscoping. So what we can see here, it's not 100% accurate, but for the sake of this tutorial, I'm not going to be spending a lot of time here. But if you want to make your rotoscoping super clear, just spend some more time frame by frame, selecting or deleting unnecessary or necessary parts. So here we have rotoscoped version of me. Let's duplicate this footage. And on the bottom one, delete rotor brush and edge effect. Let's color mark these footages as green to not be confused in the future. Select second footage and just draw the mask something like that. Do the same for the third footage. Select two footages, press F on your keyboard and feather these masks. Like that. As you can see, my footage has some issue because it was shot on iPhone. There was auto exposure. So the middle footage is a bit brighter at the beginning, but then they merged ideally. This is why I'm going to be rotoscoping these guys. And anyway, we need this to make the actual effect. So let's rotoscope this guy and this guy. So now we have clean footage, guy on the left, guy on the right, and the middle, but we have some little problem that you can notice here. There is no shadow. There are some cutoffs of my legs. Here is the same. So to prevent that, we're going to be using the following steps. So duplicate the layer that you just rotoscoped and on the bottom one, delete roto brush. And on the bottom one, just animate the opacity slider, selecting the footage, press and T, set two keyframes at the end of this footage and somewhere in the middle, the first keyframe set it to zero. So it's going to be slowly appearing in the scene underneath the rotoscoped layer. So it's almost impossible to notice. At the end of the effect, we are getting rid of the rotoscoped footage and just go with normal ones. So we won't see these artifacts again. Let's do the same for the guy on the left. Okay, let's color these guys too. So now let's animate these guys as we want. So here we won't see this guy. So we have to delete these layers. And then we need to bring rotoscope guys into the scene. It's gonna get in somewhere here. And at the beginning, it's gonna be animated like this. And let's do the same for this guy. And let's set our main rotoscope guy at the top. So they're gonna be behind him. So let's see what animation we have now. 
So select these keyframes. So select these keyframes and you can easy ease it by pressing F9. But I'm going to be using this Motion 4 plugin to make it even more interesting. I want the guy on the right to appear a little bit later. So I'm going to move these keyframes a little bit to the right. So let's pre-compose one of the guys, move all attributes into the new composition and do the same for the first guy. So get into this composition and pre-compose all of this again. So what we need now, we have to break down this layer for two layers, one for the edges and one for the body itself. So let's duplicate it and on the first one and apply edge detect. If you don't have this plugin, you can find workaround on YouTube by typing edge glow and you will find what you're looking for. So in my case, I'm going to be using edge detect because it's easier. Let's select here mono edges. I want it to be black and white, then use VC color vibrance. And let's recolor this as you want. And let's set threshold for the edge detect a bit higher, like so. And now let's add deep glow. So let's turn off this layer. And for the second layer, we use mask. So let's add a new solid layer, new solid, or just control Y and make it any color. And it's going to be our mask. Now apply turbulent noise and select strings. So bump up some brightness, the contrast to make it black and white and play around with the scale as you want. Now we want to select the bottom layer and here with the, where is the track mate column, if you can see it just took all these switches. So here we select our mask and set it to Luma. And now we have such an effect. Let's animate evolution to make mask moving like so. Set keyframe at the beginning, the next one somewhere at the end. Then we want to select our mask and the bottom layer and pre-compose it again. Apply tint effect to it. Make it as color as you want. You can make it even brighter by bringing the exposure in and apply deep glow. So now we have something like this, but we want to get rid of this black background. In effect, controls of this layer just apply shift channels and uh, remove color matting move them before color vibrance and take alpha from lightness. Now we have transparent background here. Also, we want to tweak the mask so it gradually disappear. So get into this pre-comp and twe let's tweak our mask. First of all, we want to understand where we want effect to stop. So it will be somewhere here. Let's set a mark here by pressing the star on your numpad without selecting any layer. So it's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six. So it's going to be 18 frames. And let's animate the turbulent noises brightness. Set it on the frame 18, first keyframe, set the same. And the second keyframe, it should be something higher. To make noise totally white, let's cut it off here and bring purely white solid here. And set the beginning from the frame 18. Unmate your layer and pre-compose your noises. Let's call it mask. And set matte to this mask again. And let's see what we have now. Let's get back to Precom 3 and let's animate the tint and the deep glow of these layers. So set the keyframe for the exposure of the deep glow, exposure of the exposure <laughs> effect and amount to tint. Press U on your keyboard to see all the keyframes, copy them to the beginning and just turn off all of them at the frame 18. And let's play around with the keyframe velocity. And I want to turn off the opacity for the first layer just a bit later. So the main composition, it looks something like this. But as you can see, it appears unpleasant, I would say. So let's animate the opacity here. It's going to be 100% and at the beginning, it's going to be zero. Let's play around with the velocity of the keyframes. So now I want to animate the appearance at the beginning of the animation. And for that, I'm going to be using this tort chroma, also warp puddle. Let's turn off the puddle. Let's set uh, distort chroma to something more pleasant. Let's bring down the amount. And let's animate warp puddle. To be exact, mocha opacity. So when the animation is finished, somewhere here, we want to copy the second keyframe to the beginning. And the second keyframe should be at zero. The same for distort chroma with mocha opacity. And set the velocity of the keyframe like so. 
Also, let's play around with additional deep glow on top of everything. Play around with threshold and same keyframes for the exposure. So let's see the result now. And let's animate this part, this middle part to make it more blended. So it's appearing from me, from like from inside me. So we need to work around with rotoscoped part of the middle guy. So duplicate the layer on the bottom layer. We will do the same edge thing that we did before. Precompose this layer, get into this, apply edge detect again to this layer, play around with threshold, make it mono edges, color it, deep glow to it and set radius a bit lower. And again, we need shift channels and remove color matting and set it before the deep glow, take alpha from lightness. So we could have transparent background. Let's fix the color. So let's get back to our main composition and let's play around with the effects here, such as turbulent displacement, keyframe the evolution, then add CC smear, make radius value a bit higher so we can play around like so. And let's animate the position of the smear with the appearance of the effects. So set keyframe for two property and play around as if it would like wobble like so press f9 for all keyframes so it would look like like this whoa whoa also you can add you add distort chroma for the layer underneath and play around with the amount to make it even more wobblish for example it might be super wobbly when it goes to the right let's animate the amount and less here zero and then zero here again let's animate it a bit earlier like so I don't like how toxic and acid it look like. So I'll add a tint, bring back the green color, solid green color here, like so. And one more deep glow and a bit more the exposure of the deep glow. Let's animate the opacity of this effect to zero here. 100% here and let's say there is a room for the second guy and zero here. Also, for the front layer, you can play around with the exposure. By pressing Alt, hit this stopwatch button and type wiggle. Press Enter, 10, comma, and you're gonna be flickering like so while the effect is going. And to turn off the effect, you just basically need this number to be zero. But to animate it, just delete this number, create a slider control, set your cursor to the place where the number should be and pip whip it to the slider. So now the, the slider is the number here so basically we need number one but when we want to turn it off let's sync it with turning off here let's animate it and set it to zero here like so so it's gonna be flickering here and then gradually turn off let's see how it works so this is it, this is the effect. It looked a little bit different from what I showed you at the beginning, but since I was reconstructing it from scratch, it looks a bit different. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe to my Discord channel, to this YouTube channel, and goodbye.